Hey guys, welcome to the course Let's Learn Python. My name is Asher. I have a total work experience of 15 years, primarily working on programming languages like Python, R, and SAS. Out of these three, Python has been my favorite, and there are a number of reasons for that. So we'll come to that later, but first let's try to understand what is Python. So what is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear this word Python? For me, the very first thing that came to my mind was this. <laughs> so I know that is creepy. It's a Python and that is a snake and it's a big snake. So let me remove this picture from the screen. That's rather creepy again. Let me remove that from there. And on a very serious note, let's try to understand what is Python. So Python is an object-oriented, interpreted, high-level, general-purpose programming language. Wow. So there are some huge words over there. Object-oriented, interpreted, high-level, general-purpose. So let's try to understand what those terms mean. So when we say object-oriented, basically that is a model in which programs are organized around data or objects. So when we say data or object, everything in Python is an object. And when we talk about object oriented programming, we create certain classes, we create objects out of them, and then we start using them as and where those are needed. So it is typically different from uh, the structured programming languages like C, where we keep on writing the uh, language as per the need or as per the function or logic that is required over there. So that is different. Object-oriented programs like Java, C++, and Python, they are more modular. We create classes and then we use them. Then what does interpreted means? So there are two ways of uh, running a program. Uh, programs like C, uh, they are first compiled and then executed. So when we say compiled, uh, basically the code is converted into machine language and then it is executed. Python, on the other hand, directly executes. It is not compiled. And there are certain benefits to it, which we will, which we will understand. The very first thing that is important when it comes to the, uh, you know, the interpreted languages are, they are independent of a particular type of computer. So they can run in almost any kind of computer or anywhere, pretty much it is platform independent. And again, those are the, some of the properties that are also there in most of the object-oriented languages like Java. So why Python? Then the very next question is, when we have so many programming languages, plethora of them, why are we focused only on Python? So again, there are a number of reasons for that. The very first one, it is free. And trust me, guys, that is a very important feature. I have been working on SAS a lot, but SAS is not free to use. And that is one of the reasons a lot of companies are shifting from SAS to Python. And I don't want to get into any kind of, you know, debate on that. But definitely for me, I love Python because it is free and it is accessible. So it is very easy to learn and understand. When you write Python code, it's pretty much like you're writing a simple English language kind of thing. Because of this, uh, you know, syntax of natural language, it is very easy to understand and accessible. Then the next thing is reliable and efficient. So you can deploy any Python application in any environment with great speed and without any performance loss. So that is again one very good feature. It work across several uh, uh, you know, domains like desktop application, you can create mobile application, you can work on web development. So pretty much anywhere that you want, it is not bound to any single platform or domain. And it offers the same kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, it offers the same experience everywhere. So it runs very fast. It is platform independent. Then the next reason why Python has been very famous lately is because of the amazing libraries that it has. So libraries like NumPy and Pandas are there, which makes working on big projects very easy. So when it comes to number, NumPy is a fantastic library. 
when you want to read certain pdf or some other document like uh, you know word document or something and want to convert them into data frames we use pandas so those kind of libraries are, are already there then there are also libraries like specific libraries with specific focus like uh, if we talk about machine learning we have scikit learn if we talk about deep learning we have tensorflow and keras so basically pretty much everything for any use we have library which we can utilize and when we talk about big data there are a lot of libraries that are heavily supported by python when it comes to big data so that is again one of the advantages because big data is a big thing a lot of data is there on the cloud and to utilize and to harness that you can utilize python and then definitely two of the very focus areas when it comes to ai is machine learning and deep learning so machine learning almost all the libraries that are utilized in machine learning are present they are baked into the python uh, uh, libraries like random forest uh, decision tree whether it is xgboost lot of other uh, lo logistic regression linear regression everything and every uh, you know pretty much any kind of machine learning library is present in python and when we talk about deep learning we take the next step forward whether it is ann whether it is cnn whether it is rnn lstm sequence to sequence python supports all of those it has library built in for all of these technologies so and then one of the big reason is uh, it is backed by a lot of corporates in fact in google it is the official language so uh, you know uh, supported by google Uh, is something that definitely is a big thing so uh, that's why python has been famous lately uh, tensor packages like tensorflow and keras has been developed in google itself and then uh, lastly but not you know and then there are various reasons to that but one of the reason again is active supportive community so uh, whether it is uh, you know uh, guides or tutorials that you want on a certain topic there is a lot of active developer community which supports so if you are stuck on any project and if you have certain question you can go on websites like stack overflow and analytics with there and pretty much you will get get the answer instantaneously so if it is a simple project whether it is a huge project a complex one you will get active community su support from the python developers and the community so uh, those are the reasons and then there are a lot of other reasons i am sure but yeah i think these many reasons are sufficient enough for us to focus on python now where is python used so whether it is you know processing certain text displaying number of images using the again the inbuilt libraries you want to solve any scientific questions you want to save data you want to do data mining python is extensively used and again there are lot of packages which are available to serve the purpose and as i said when it when it comes to corporates it's official language at google it's even used by nasa for programming their equipments and space machinery that that's nice right and then when it comes to ai machine and deep learning nobody can miss python the number of libraries that 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 python supports when it comes to machine and deep learning majority of implementation that has been done uh, you know in this area has been on uh, python and again i do not want into get, uh, want to get into any debate but definitely when you think about machine learning and deep learning you think of python so that's where it is used i think uh, in the in the recent years in with the advancement of machine learning and deep learning and ai it has uh, you know it has been into lot of you know uh, focus so that's where people have started learning python so let's begin and how we are going to uh, you know uh, take this course forward and i assume that uh, uh, most of you who are listening to this lecture are beginners so we are going to start with installation so how we are going to install uh, python on our computer there are more than one ways to do it so we'll learn at least two ways how to install python on your pc or laptop then where do you write your code so uh, do you have a console uh can you write your code in some kind of notebook so there are a lot of ways uh, where you can write your code when it comes to python you can simply write your code in uh, a text a text pad or a notepad and run that code there are certain dedicated notebooks that are over there so jupyter notebook is the very common and most frequently frequently used uh, uh platform where you can 
write your python code and then there are certain ids like uh, you you can install anaconda which will in turn give you facility of installing spider and we'll see how we do that and then you can also install ids like atom so multiple ways of writing your code on multiple places and we will see some of them for sure and then how to run your code how can you run your code so uh, if you are writing a code on notepad from where to run it uh, places like jupyter notebook you can just go ahead and write your code and execute it there only and you will get the results so we'll go through all of this in the coming lectures so see you there thank you hi guys welcome back to the course let's learn python in this lecture we are going to understand how to install python so there are multiple ways of installing python on your pc or your desktop but we are going to go through a couple of them so the first one is you install directly python from python.org and for that i have provided you this link the next way of downloading and installing python is through anaconda so again this name is pretty scary anaconda is something related to python right so what is anaconda anaconda is a free and open source distribution of the python and r programming language in simple terms you can say that anaconda provides a platform where you can write your python and r code so in this course we are going to utilize anaconda uh, to write our code so in most of the course we will be launching jupyter notebook from anaconda prompt write our code there and execute it and we'll see how we'll do that so but first thing first let's see how to install uh, python from both of these links so i'll hop on to my chrome browser so i am inside the chrome browser and uh, let me type python over here and hit enter and there you will see uh, the very first link or the very first uh, 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 url that opens up is www.python.org go ahead and click on this download python and it will bring up this page so here you can see the provision to download the latest version uh, of python for windows and by the way the latest version uh, at this point of time is python 3.7.4 and uh, if you want to install uh, python for linux or unix click on over here and you can install 3.7.4 from here and if you want to install if you are working on uh, mac os just click on this link and install the latest version so as i said we are going to utilize anaconda uh, to do most of the coding in this course i will not download this but if you are comfortable working in python directly and you want to download this link and then install python feel free to do so so now let me go ahead and open the link for anaconda so just type anaconda in google search and you can see various videos over here right but anyway so we are focused majorly over on this website www.anaconda.com click over here and this will bring you to the home page of anaconda so here are a lot of options available over here you need to focus on this green uh, button so there is an option to download click on this green button and it will bring up a page like this for anaconda distribution so then again you have to click on this download so click on download and this will bring up another page uh, with some options over there so for windows it is an option to download python 3.7 and python 2.7 so we are not going to focus on python 2.7 because that is the legacy version that python that the programmers used to code so we are not going to focus over there we are going to download python 3.7 version so and if you are working on windows just click on download but if you are working on mac os this is the link that you have to click on and if you are working on linux this is the link that you have to click on so just click on python 3.7 version download once you click on the download the download will start and as you can see this is a uh, this has a file size of 3637 mb so anyways i am not going to download it because i already have this exe downloaded on my system uh, and this will take some time depending upon your internet bandwidth so feel free to have some coffee or something and once the download is complete we will start the installation 
so because because i already have this installer on my system let me bring that up so i have cancelled the download for anaconda and once the download is complete you will find this exe uh, at your specific download folder go ahead and click on this exe file and make sure that you are running your pc in admin mode so this will bring up the setup for anaconda uh, just click on next and then you can go ahead through the end user license agreement and it's good it's good to always go through these licenses uh, once you go through it just click on i agree and then you can install for you yourself or all users so i'll click on just me i'll go next and here you will find the destination folder where your anaconda will be installed and because i already have anaconda installed on my system i'll give it some other name and i'll say next here are two options that are available the first option itself says not recommended so just leave it click on the second option okay and because anaconda is already installed on my system i don't need to do it so i'll cancel it but you have to click on this one checkbox and then click on install and this will begin the installation so i'll cancel this for now and let me show you how this anaconda navigator looks like when it is installed so i'll cancel this installation and let me bring up the anaconda navigator so go ahead and look for this icon in your on your computer and click on the shortcut that has been provided so let me bring that up so once you click on anaconda navigator this is how the navigator looks like so you can launch jupyter notebook from anaconda navigator so jupyter notebook is the place where we are going to do most of the coding in this course though i will tell you what are various ways of coding uh, in notepad or in spider so when we talk about spider it is an id that has been provided by anaconda navigator so basically spider is an id where you can do python coding and if you are used to do coding in r studio then it's good to use spider because both of them resemble a lot so if you are used to r studio go ahead and use spider but for us for this course we are going to utilize jupyter notebook so there's one other way uh, through which you can bring up the jupyter notebook so let me show that to you so i'll minimize this and once you install the anaconda you will also get the anaconda prompt installed so this is the anaconda prompt installed let me bring up a fresh window yeah so you can see the anaconda prompt uh, you know installed uh, once you install the anaconda uh, software and over here you can just go ahead and say jupyter notebook and hit on enter or let me actually go ahead and change the directory of this uh, you know uh, for or change the folder in which i am working so i'll just say cd desktop and i'll create a new uh, folder uh, by some name say python 1 and i'll go inside over there so i'll say cd python 1 and these are some of the uh, command prompt basics that you should, that you might be familiar with and or you can probably go ahead and start looking in google it's very easy straight forward just like you use them in a command prompt so over here once you are inside your uh, you know folder that you want to work in just type jupyter notebook and this should bring up the jupyter notebook so the jupyter notebook is up uh over here you can see that uh, you know if whatever notebooks you are going to create this will be populated over here because we created a fresh folder the notebook list is empty so we'll go ahead and create a new notebook so click on this new over here click on this python 3 and this will bring up an empty notebook so the very first thing or the best practice that you have to follow is you, here you can see entitled just click on it and you have to name your jupyter notebook you can say my first notebook or you can choose any name that you want now here you have to start doing coding and definitely i am going through going to go through various details when it comes to how to code in python what are various you know kind of objects and things that are available in python but just to show you how uh, jupyter notebook works let's say we write 2 plus 3 and over here you can see run just click on this run and this will give the output of 5 so neat right that's pretty straight forward if you want to write 3 minus 7 just click on this run it will give the output 
So you can see that you just need to write your code and you click on run and it gets executed. So that is that is something good about Jupyter Notebook. You can uh, execute the notebook uh, in blocks or whatever code you want to execute and then you can move forward and you can see the output right over there. So and then once you are done coding in Jupyter Notebook, you can you can go ahead and save this. And once you save this, if you look in the folder, you will find this my first notebook inside the folder that you have created. So if you see, this is the my first notebook that we created and it is saved inside the this Python one folder that we created. So we saw how to install Python uh, through python.org or through Anaconda. And once the Anaconda was installed, we saw we saw there were options available uh, to run your to write your code in Jupyter Notebook or Spider. Then we also saw, saw how we can uh, launch uh, Jupyter Notebook from the Anaconda prompt. And then we, we saw how to write and write your code, execute it and then save your notebook. In the next lecture, we are going to see some other ways through which we can write Python code and execute the Python code. So see you there in the next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see what are some of the various options that are available when it comes to writing and executing Python code. So to execute and run your Python code, uh, there are a lot of options available. We are going to discuss four of them, Anaconda prompt, Notepad, Spider, and Jupyter Notebook. So Anaconda prompt got installed on your system when you install Anaconda, and you can bring that up uh, from your PC. The second option is the Notepad. So you can write your code in the Notepad, and then you can execute that Notepad or the code from the Anaconda prompt or command prompt, and we'll see how. The third one is the Spider. So Spider is the ID that got installed on your uh, uh, you know, uh, system together with Anaconda. So if you open up the Anaconda Navigator, you will see the Spider ID over there and you can launch it from there. And then uh, the last but not the least for this course is Jupyter Notebook. So we are going to utilize Jupyter Notebook for writing all the Python code in rest of the course. So let's start. Let me bring up my Anaconda prompt first. So I am inside my Anaconda prompt and right now I, I am in the folder Usher. So I'll change my directory to desktop and on the desktop, let's see how our desktop looks like as of now. So on the desktop, I have two folders. I am going to create one more folder so that we can start working on that folder. So there are two ways of doing it. One, you can create a new folder from here and just click on it and create a new folder. What I am going to do is I am going to create a new folder from the Anaconda prompt. So I'll use the command mkdir to create a new folder and then I'll say mkdir python2 hit enter. So now the folder is created and I'm going to change my direction uh, path to that specific folder. So I'll say python2 and now I am inside the folder that we created. So to code uh, in Python and from the Anaconda prompt, you just need to say Python hit enter and this will bring you to this specific portion. You can see three arrows over here. Starting this, you can start writing your Python code. So let's uh, write a very simple Python code. Print, we'll say print and we'll print hello world. And we'll close it, hit enter and the uh, this statement will be executed and you will see you can see hello world printed just below the line. So that's how you write a Python code in Anaconda prompt. Say for example, you want to add two numbers, two plus three, hit enter, you, get, you will get the result five. Say for example, you want to say A is equal to two, B is equal to six, and then you create C is equal to A plus B. So you can see the code is executed at each and every line. And now if you print C, you will get the result just below it. So A was, uh, you know, two B was six and you got the result of eight over here. So you can uh, keep on writing your Python code uh, in the command prompt. Uh, once you are done with it, you have to type quit with parenthesis and hit enter and you will be back to your prompt. Uh, the next option to write your Anaconda uh, code is the notepad. So uh, we will see how we can do that. So let me go back in my, on my desktop. 
So inside this Python 2 folder, I will create a new text file and let's name it uh, sample and open this file and start writing your code directly. So you can say print hello world, close the parenthesis, go ahead and save the file. And then if you go back to your Anaconda prompt and then you say Python and give the name of the file. So you said sample and one small trick over here. Once you are working in this prompt uh, or the command prompt, uh, if you want to bring up a certain file or a folder, you just start typing the name and then press tab. It will auto complete the remaining, uh, you know, name. Uh, it, 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 it actually matches, matches to the closest name. So once that is done, you said Python sample.txt, hit enter and the uh, code inside the text file has been executed and you can see hello world over here. So that is a neat way of doing it if you are planning to use command prompt or the anaconda prompt to write your code because uh, you can you can write your code in the text file which is stored separately and you can execute your code here in the anaconda or the command prompt so those were the two ways now the third way is through spider so i am going to launch anaconda navigator and then we will launch a spider id from there so i am inside the anaconda navigator and if, if you click on this spider launch button, this will launch the spider for you. So let's go ahead and click on launch. And these names are pretty, you know, <laughs> interesting. So we have Anaconda, we have a spider, we have Python, the family is going bigger. So right now it is launching Anaconda, uh, sorry, spider. And uh, let's see how, lo how long does it take. Okay, so the sp spider is up and it is having the recent version Python 3.7. And again to write a, uh, so this is the uh, part where you write the code. This is the editor and this is the console where you see the results. So say for example, you want to write again print hello world and then close the parenthesis. To execute a Python uh, code inside this editor, you have to select this piece. So there are two ways of doing it. Once you select it, either you click on this run button or you go ahead and uh, if you are working on Windows, press shift plus enter and this will execute your code. So the output you can see in the console. So you can see hello world has been printed. Now if you if there are some errors, if you try to print this, sorry so if you try to print this hold on the file is not saved so i'll again go ahead and say shift plus enter and uh, you can see there was an unexpected end of file while passing so because it was is it was expecting a uh, closing parenthesis the code has not executed so whatever the result is you can see it in the console over here so that's how you utilize a spider for coding in P python uh, and this is something that is very much similar to the R Studio. So if you are familiar and you are comfortable working in R Studio, you can find this very useful. Uh, you can go ahead and keep on using this spider uh, ID. But for the purpose of this course, we will be utilizing the Jupyter Notebook. So I'll close this for now. And uh, let's minimize this. So we saw three ways and now the last one is the Jupyter Notebook. So let me again bring up my Anaconda prompt. Anaconda prompt from my desktop. So once inside the Anaconda prompt, just make sure that you are inside the folder that you want to work in because whatever notebook you are going to create or whatever notebook, notebook you are going to open, it should be inside this Python 2 folder. So over here, just write Jupyter notebook, hit enter, and this should bring up the Jupyter notebook on your PC. So this is how it looks like. This is the sample txt that we have created. So all the files present, present inside the folder will be displayed here. To create a new Python uh, notebook, you have to click on new and then click on Python 3. And this will create an empty uh, Jupyter notebook. Now the very first thing uh, and the best practice is to give a name to your Jupyter notebook. So click on this entitled and there will be an option to rename it. So we'll say my first example and you can 
choose any name that you want over here in the notebook so you will see one block of uh, cell available to write your code let's say print hello world and again it's the same so either you click on run over here or you uh, so if you click on run this will be executed and hello world will be printed if you want to uh, say 2 plus 3 and to execute it you, you can go also go add and use shift plus enter it will give the result of 5 over here so this is pretty decent uh, you keep on writing the code in blocks and then you can execute that block so that's how you utilize jupyter notebook for writing your python code so we saw multiple ways or actually four ways of writing a python code one is in the anaconda prompt itself the second one was we wrote our code in notepad and then we utilize anaconda prompt to execute it the third one was a spider it was an id that has been provided by anaconda navigator and then the fourth one is jupyter notebook which was which we launched uh, using anaconda prompt but we can also launch the jupyter notebook from anaconda navigator so those were the four options available now you are familiar with how to write a simple uh, code and run it uh, a simple python code and run it with that we come to the end of this lecture and this section congratulations on completing the section 1 of the course starting the next section we are going to learn the fundamentals of python how to deal with numbers in python how to deal with strings in python how to define a function in python and so on so forth so see you in the next section thank you hey guys welcome back to the course let's learn python in this section we are going to understand what is data structure and what are various kind of data structures that are supported by python we will also see how to deal with numbers and strings in python and how we can assign and create variables in python so when we talk about data structure what is data structure to put in a very simple term data structure are structures which can hold some kind of related data together and if we talk about python there are four inbuilt data structure that are available in python one is list one is tuple one is dictionary and the last one is set so we are going to understand each and every one of these data structures in python but before that in the next section we are going to understand how does python deals with numbers and then we will see how we can assign variables in python so see you in the next uh, lecture thank you hi guys welcome back in this lecture we are going to understand how does python deal with numbers so when we talk about numbers there are primarily two types of numbers in python one is integers which are whole numbers and then the second one is floating point which are the numbers which have decimal places between them so let's do some basic maths in python on these numbers i am going to open my jupyter notebook from my anaconda prompt so let me do that so i am inside my anaconda prompt and i will change my directory to desktop then i'll go ahead and create a folder by the name section 2 and then i will um, uh, change my directory to the specified folder so in this folder we are going to uh, save all the notebooks that we are going to create in section 2 so we'll start with launching of jupyter notebook so just type jupyter notebook and hit enter and it, i think by now you might be getting pretty familiar with how to launch jupyter notebook using the anaconda prompt so again this is an empty list because the folder we just created and it is empty we'll click on create new notebook click on python 3 and this will bring up an empty notebook you can rename the no notebook if you want or you can leave it without any name but it is best practice to name the notebook so we'll name it numbers you can choose any name that you want now over here we are going to see how we can add two numbers so if we say 2 plus 2 and hit enter uh, the the result is 4 if we say 2 multiply by 3 so in python for multiplication we use asterisk sign so if we say 2 multiply by 3 the result is 6 if you want to divide two number you just say 8 slash 4 hit enter and you get the result of 2 so you can say that uh, you can see that we can add subtract 
and subtraction is left so if you say 6 minus 2 and hit enter you will get a 4 over there so you can use python as a calculator you can perform all the arithmetic operators uh, on any number that you want so uh, so there, there are certain other operators that you can use say for example if you want to divide two numbers and want to uh, want the result to be rounded to the nearest decimal place you say 5 divided by 2 so 5 divided by 2 is uh, 2.5 if you say round off 5 divided by 2 you'll get a value of 2 so it got rounded off uh, then we have one more operator which is known as mod so basically what happens is uh, if you say 5 mod and mod is denoted by a percentage sign 5 mod 2 and hit enter you will get a value of 1 so what happens over here 5 is divided by 2 and whatever the remainder is you will get it over here so if you say 4 mod 2 the remainder is 0 if you say 10 mod 3 again you will get the remainder 1 99 mod 11 or let's say 10 you will get a remainder of 9 so this uh, function is very useful when you want to see if a number is odd or even say for example you have a number 5 you want to see if it is odd just divide it by 2 if the remainder is uh, not 0 it is uh, odd number and if any number say for example 20 you divide that by 2 if the remainder is 0 you will know that it is an even number because the remainder is 0 okay so those were some of the uh, things that you can do in python python basically follow the board mass rule that is there in the arithmetic so it stands for bracket of division multiplication addition and subtraction so say for example and let me mark down this so that it is a comment so say for example and you can uh, convert any uh, you know cell to a comment by just going over here here are four options available the first one is code the second is markdown third one is heading so you can also convert this into a heading and you can say it's a heading and uh, so for the board mass say for example you say 4 divide by 3 plus 2 and you hit enter so it is 3.33 because division will happen first and then 2 will be added to that similarly if you want to say 3 plus 2 into 5 you will see that it is 13 because multiplication will happen first and then 3 will be added uh, and then the parenthesis so the bracket take precede pre it presides over anything else so if you just write in bracket 3 plus 2 and then you do a multiply by 5 the result should be 3 plus 2 5 into 5 25 so you can see the result is 25 so that's how you can use uh, uh, you know uh, Jupyter notebook or in fact the python program to do calculations and that's how python perform these arithmetic operations so that being done and uh, we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we are going to see how we can assign variables in python hi guys welcome back to the course let's learn python in this lecture we are going to understand what are variables and how we can define and initiate variables in python so what is a variable a variable is a placeholder which holds value which can vary or change so you can create a variable and you can assign a specific value to it and it will hold that value throughout the program till the time you change it and we'll see how we do that in python but before we start making variables there are certain rules when it comes to the naming of the variables so we cannot start a variable name with a number that is not allowed in python we cannot have empty spaces in between a variable name so say for example you want to define a variable world cup because there is there is an empty space in between you cannot use that name instead you can use underscore and define your variable like world underscore cup and that is doable in python that will be valid then you cannot have special characters so you can use underscore and score but there are number of characters that you cannot utilize special characters that you cannot use when you name a variable so you cannot use percentage dollar and asterisk and there are a lot of other valid values that you cannot use when you define a variable name in python so you can find that on google but most of the special characters do not work and then you should avoid using names like 
string list round because some of them are function that are there in python some of them are data structured like list so that has been defined in python as a data structure though the name will not give an error it will work but it might lead to some incorrect results so better to avoid using names like that in python so with that let's hop on to my jupyter notebook and let's start assigning and creating variables so i am inside my jupyter notebook and i am going to utilize the same notebook now so i will first start with a heading and will press enter so the very first variable that we are going to define is let's say x is equal to 2 now what happens is x is a variable that has been initialized with an integer and you can check what type of integer what type of variable is there by saying type and then you pass the variable uh, name so it will give an integer so this variable is of type integer and it holds a value of 2 so if you just say x you'll get the output 2 let's assign one more integer say 3 y is equal to 3 if you look inside you will say y has a value of 3 and let's create one third variable and let's say x plus y now what do you think is happening over here we are creating a third variable z and we are adding up the x and y variable so if we say z you will get the value of 5 and if you look at type of z you will still find it is an integer because we are adding two integers let's say you create a variable c and say name so if you look at that c you have name inside that let's try to add an integer and a so y has an integer and then c is a character so let's first check so type of c it's a string let's try to add a string with an integer and see what happens and it says you cannot conc concatenate a string to uh, not integer to string so the data type has to be same so let's define one more uh, name d and let's say joe and if we say c plus d and that is fine usher plus joe if you want to put empty space in between you set c plus plus d and this will give usher joe so that's how you can combine so you saw that we can combine strings we can combine integers but we cannot combine different data types and that does make sense right so uh, that's way that's how you can define integers in python that's how you can define uh, variables in python to hold integers and a string now one very important uh, topic or point to discuss over here is you can override the variables so say for example you create a variable uh, name my name let's create this variable and let's say it's usher right my name right now so if you look at my name hold on so if you look at my name it is holding this value usher the type of the integer is the type of the variable is a string so that is as, as expected because we have passed character that is perfect now what you can do is you can also go ahead and say my name is equal to one and now if you run my name you will see that it is now holding a one instead of the value usher and if you check the type of this variable you will see that it is an integer so that brings up a very important point when you create a variable in python it can override not only the value but the data type also so make sure that you are creating variables and you are passing values in over there but if you try to again create a variable by the same name and assign something else to it the previous value uh, in the variable will be overridden so that is something important to keep in mind we also talked about that we cannot initialize a variable with a number so let's say let's do this one name is equal to usher let's try it out it says invalid syntax because we are trying to initialize variable with a number let's say world cup and let's say one and it says invalid syntax because there is an empty space in between so we cannot do that if we say world cup is equal to one this will work perfectly fine and you can get value out of it so that is a perfect variable and it can be created you can use underscore 
so you can assign any uh, value to the an, an integer let's say my value uh, is equal to 10.5 so if you look at the type of my value it is saying float so as we discussed there are two types of number integers and float that are there in python so when it when there is a decimal place in between you will get a floating kind of variable so we discussed how to define a variable we discussed how to initiate a variable pass values to variable and we can check what type of variable it is by using type and then we also saw we can add two variables subtract two variables divide two variables and pretty much all the arithmetic operators we can perform we can also go ahead and uh, define variables initiate that with a character or a string and then we can also add two strings by simply putting a plus sign in between them so those are the some of the uh, examples that we saw uh, how to create a variable how to assign values to variables and how to perform arithmetic operators on variable with that we come to end of this uh, lecture and in the next lecture we are going to understand what are strings so we'll see how we can define strings and what are some of the various operations that we can perform on strings so see you in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back in this lecture we are going to understand what are strings and how does python deal with strings so when we talk about strings it is a data type used to represent text or sequence of character within single or double quotes so you can see three examples over there we have said hello inside double quotes that is perfectly valid in python then we see a sentence my name is joe inside the single quote that's that's a perfectly valid string in python and then in the third uh, uh, third example we can see a sentence i can't go to shopping and that is inside the double quotes now the third sentence tell you why have why we have this option of uh, single quotes and double quote say for example we had only option of including single quotes now if you write this sentence i can't go to shopping the single quote will end at after i can, can and this might give you incorrect result or even an error while programming so that's where you know single and double quotes come handy so when we talk about strings there are there are some very important operations that we perform on on strings when it comes to python one of them is known as indexing so what is indexing it allows you to grab a single character from a string and it is denoted by a square bracket and this bracket is placed after the string or the variable that hold the string so this example will make it more clear you can see that we have a variable x and we have assigned a value of joe to it now indexing start from the very first uh, uh, position uh, or very first character of the uh, string so the very first character holds the value of 0 uh, inside the string then the next character holds the value of 1 or the index position of 1 the third position uh, we have the index value of 2 so uh, that's how indexing goes it starts from 0 and it goes uh, all the way from left to right so if you want to pull this uh, this this character j you just need to give this variable name and inside the square bracket you have to give position and i mean index 0 and it will give a value of j so that's how the indexing works in python let's understand some more examples so in this case joe the very first uh, character has a uh, index position of 0 then o is having an index position of 1 e is having an index position of 2 if you look at this sentence well done it starts with index position of 0 then the next e is at the index position 1 index value 1 so it goes all the way to the last where e is having an index value of 8 important thing to note over here is even the blank spaces have index value so in this case the fourth space is held by the index position 4 uh, when you want to uh, you know read from uh, right to left you want to start from the end of the string you just start doing it by a negative one so when you say minus one of a string it will pull the last character in the string if you want to pull the second last character in the string you have to say minus two for the index uh, the important thing to note here is uh, the zero is uh, for, for the zero index 
it is always going to be the very first character in the string so once we have understood indexing let's also see what is slicing so if you want to you know uh, grab a certain subsection of, of the string that's where you use slicing so the syntax again is the square bracket that we use for indexing we have to give a start position we have to give a stop position and then uh, there's one more option how many uh, indexes you want to jump so this will be more clear once we start coding start stop and step all of uh, these parameters are optional so we'll see uh, how we use indexing and slicing and how we can define a strings let's open the jupyter notebook and start working so let me hop on to my jupyter notebook so i am inside my anaconda prompt and i'll change my uh, folder to the one that we are working on section 2 and once inside the folder i'll say jupyter notebook and this should bring up the jupyter notebook in the folder that we are working on so let's create a new uh, notebook and we will give it a name of strings so let's start by defining a simple variable and let's hold uh, the very first string in it my name is joe let's execute this by pressing shift plus enter now if you look at x it is having this string my name is joe if you look at type of x it is again a string so that is good now talking about indexing and uh, slicing so let's see how indexing work so if we say x of 0 that is the first index of the string you will get the first character and that is m if you say x of minus 1 you should get the last character of the string so far so good let's delete this okay so now let's write one more sentence usher is fantastic and let's press enter so this is fine if you want to uh, you know grab the very first word of the of the string you will say is a string and then followed by a square bracket zero it will give okay so that was a blank let's remove this blank from here again run it and it will grab the a and that is the first index uh, from the string so now if you want to uh, say for example uh, you want to just grab the name usher so that's where the slicing comes into picture so what we are going to do is we are going to store this into some variable let's say y equal to let's remove this and now if you look at y again usher is fantastic and we'll say y and we'll give the start position so we are going to start with an index 0 it will go all the way up to so a is at the index 0 then s is at 1 h is at 2 a is at 3 r is at 4 and remember so if we say 0 to 4 we'll get a s h a asha so it is starts from the index that you mentioned but the the stop is uh, not inclusive so it does not include the index position that you include in the stop so to include a share you have to say 0 to 5 and it will give you the entire name say for example you want to grab if you will say a starting position 6 till position 8 and it will give you is so that's how you use uh, slicing to grab certain section uh, of the string so i think we went through indexing and slicing uh, we saw how we are going to create variables that can store strings we saw how we can utilize uh, indexing and slicing to grab certain portion of the string and i think that's all that we had to learn in the string lecture uh, let's move ahead to the next one thank you so much hi and welcome back in this lecture we are going to learn what are list in python so remember when we discussed about data structure python has four data structure list set tuple and dictionary so let's start with list so what is a list in python a data structure in python that is mutable or changeable ordered sequence of element so when you say mutable it simply means you can change the content without changing their identity so you can uh, you know add certain element to the list you can remove certain element from the list you can sort the list and so on and so forth now each element inside of a list is called as item 
and then lists are just like arrays declared in other languages so you might you are familiar with certain arrays that you declare in c and all those languages so they are very much similar with some of their own properties and how do you define the list so you define the list by having values between a square bracket so you have to initiate a variable and probably define a list and uh, the, the notation should be square bracket inside that square bracket whatever values you have is known as list so let's go ahead and hop on to my jupyter notebook and see how does list look like how we can define them define them and what are certain operations that we can perform on list so i am inside my anaconda prompt and i'll go ahead and change my folder to section 2 and i'll launch my jupyter notebook from here so i am inside the jupyter notebook and let's open a new notebook by the name list so we'll rename the notebook to list because that is something that we are going to learn and let us start with creating a very simple list and let's say x is equal to 1 2 3 now you can see we have these elements or the items with a square bracket and that's where it is a list so if you say type of x it should give you a list so good now uh, one interesting thing over here is a list can have a combination of integers and uh, uh, you know character strings so let's say you want to define a, a list known as one and then you say caret then you say jo and if you just see this is a list with uh, you know a combination of character and integers now if you want to and then each element or item inside the list uh, have an index position so if you want to see what is the first index position or actually the zero index element or item inside the list it will give you a 1 if you want to uh, see what position uh, what is the second index position it will give jo and so on and so forth now there are certain operations that we can perform on a list so remember uh, we discussed that in in python everything is an object so list in list is also an object and the basic difference between list and some of the other objects like integers float strings and tuples are those object cannot be changed but list can be changed so let's do this let's say x dot and because it is an object if you hit a tab and and this actually works in jupyter notebook for sure so if you say x dot and you hit a tab you will get certain options that you can you know perform on this object so append let's see what append does so let's try to append one value over here and let's try to append 99 just for the sake of it hit enter now if you see x you will see it has one more uh, item which is 99 and that has been added at the end of the list now instead of you know uh, discussing list like this let's let's take a very interesting example uh, probably so let me delete these uh, you know uh, cells from here and let's say you are going to market to buy certain items normally what do you do you go ahead and create create a list of items so what i'm going to do is and let's uh, you know say uh, my list and uh, you go ahead and start creating items that you want to buy from the market so you want to buy carrot you also want to buy apple and then you are planning to buy say for example uh, juice you will add some sugar and so on so forth so you create a list of uh, the objects that you list of the item that you want to buy it is very similar to the grocery list that you create so let's hit an enter over here and if you now look at my list it will give the list of elements that you want to buy so far so good we are fine with our list now you want to see uh, because this list can grow you know large and you want to sort in some order so in ascending order say for example alphabetically you will say my list dot sort and it's a function so you have to give the bracket over here and you say sort now if you look look at my list the elements are sorted so though you uh, uh, apple was having a second you know uh, the second index or the second first index index start with zero so it was on the second position now once you sort it the apple at, is at the zero index so uh, 
but then so you think okay list is good but i forget something i need to add one more item over here which is say for example uh, uh, chessboard so now you say my list dot append and you simply go and write chess board hit enter if you look at my list now you will see the chess board has been added as the last item in the list great now uh, you think that okay uh, let me uh, i added carrot incorrectly and i don't want carrot so i want to remove that item from the list so i'll say my list dot remove and then you will say go ahead and say carrot hit enter if you look at my list now carrot has been removed and it has only two it uh, four items apple juice sugar and chess board similarly you can uh, if you don't want chess board you can say so if you want to pop out the last item from the list you can say my list dot pop just that you don't need to mention the item and it will pop the last item in your list so if you say it will pop chess board now my list actually is having only three objects apple juice and sugar so that's how list work you you clearly saw that list are mutable uh, we can change the elements or items inside the list we can sort the list we can pop certain item from the list and so on so forth so that was all about list and lists lists are very handy when it comes to doing various operations in in python so probably you can utilize this in your data mining pretty much everywhere that you are going to use python code lists list comes very handy so with that we come to the end of this lecture and see you in the next lecture where we are going where we are going to discuss what are tuples so thank you see you there hi guys welcome back in this lecture we are going to understand what are tuples so tuples in python are sequence of immutable python objects so when we say immutable it simply means we cannot add any item to the tuple we cannot remove any item from the tuple we cannot sort the tuple and so on so forth so they are just like list except we cannot change the value inside the tuples and they use parenthesis so in the list we had that square bracket in tuple you create tuple by using parenthesis and just like list they can have both characters and numbers inside them so let's hop on to our jupyter notebook and see how we can create a tuple and what are some of the things that we can do with tuple so we are going to utilize the same notebook for tuple so let's rename this one let's say list and tuples rename it okay so you can create a simple tuple by saying y equal to 1 2 and then some name joe and then you hit enter so if you look at y this is a this is these are the elements or the items that are there inside the tuple and if you see type of y it is a tuple great now if you say y and you put a dot and then you insert tab you will see there are only two options available with, with tuple it is count and index so and definitely that makes sense because as we discussed you cannot add or remove any item from the tuple you cannot count uh, sort any item uh, sort the items in the tuple so there therefore those options are not available so what do you mean by count so for example say you want to count how many times one has occurred inside the tuple it will say one let's create one more tuple and let's say 1 1 1 1 sorry 1 comma 1 sorry 1 comma 1 comma 1 again and then let's say 2 2 and then let's say 3 3 and 3 fine if you see the if you want to check the count of 1 you can please say z count 1 and 1 has occurred four time now the other one is uh, you know again going back to the same y tuple there was a such second option that was index so if you see what is the index of jo you will get the index and it is at the index 2 great so that's how you create tuple uh, you cannot you know uh, you cannot make changes to tuple once you create them and there are certain usage of it once you create the tuple probably you want to have some sort of list for which you do not want to change the values you just go ahead and create a tuple and again going by the same example you want your son to go and buy certain items from the market but you want to ensure that he cannot play with the list so he cannot you know uh, add add any item remove any item you can create a tuple for him and he should not be able to do so so that is the primary difference between tuple and list tuples are not mutable 
and you can create the tuple by using bracket so with that we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we are going to understand what are set thank you hi guys welcome back so after list and tuples it's time for us to go ahead and understand what are set so set is an unordered collection of unique elements and there can be no duplicate elements in set so basically it's not the elements in set are not in any specific order and the most important thing is the set should not have any duplicate elements so the key or the elements inside the set cannot be repeated like we can have you know duplicates in list and tuple so to create a set you have to say uh, the keyword set with a bracket over there let's hop on to the jupyter notebook and see how to create a set so i am inside my anaconda prompt and i will change my directory to section that we are working on and we will launch the jupyter notebook from here okay so here uh, in the jupyter notebook now we can see the files that we are creating so we created list and tuples last uh, we also created numbers and strings let's go ahead and create a new notebook and we will name it set or let's say set and dictionaries because i am going to use the same notebook for dictionary also let's rename it so let's say we create a variable x and we say set so hit enter now x basically is has been created and it has no elements inside that if you look at the type of x it it will say it's a set okay now let's try to add certain element to set so we'll say x dot add and let's add 20 now if you look at x it has 20 inside it and you can see uh, it has a bracket kind of thing over here but uh, uh, don't confuse that with dictionary uh, uh, the set is something that is looks similar when it comes to notation but dictionaries are more of a key value pair here we don't have any key value here we have just the element okay so let's add one more element to the set let's add uh, Uh, say 40 now if we look at our set it's 20 and 40 and we can add uh, uh, any character also in here so let's add joe in there if you look at x it has 20 40 and joe now we know that we cannot have duplicate elements in set so let's try to add 20 again and let's see what happens so it won't give any error but if you look at look at x it is still says 20 40 and joe so it will not add 20 because it knows that it is a set and 20 is already present so it's not going to add anything further in there so why do we have set and where do we use it so definitely we are going to utilize set where we want to create a list of items which do not have any duplicate value and since we are talking about the list let's say we create a new list my list and let's say it has one Two, 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 three, and uh, X, Y, Z, whatever. Let's create it. If you look at my list, so it has uh, one, and then three times two, and three, and X, Y, Z. Uh, now, what we are going to do is we are going to create my set, and we will set the list inside it. So, what this will do, if you look at my set now. it has 1 2 3 and x y z so because we created a set out of a list it eliminated the duplicate values and it only has 1 2 and 3 along with x y z the unique elements that were there in the list so that's how you use set it is basically very useful when it comes to removing the duplicate items and to ensure that we do not have any duplicate item uh, unlike list and tuples which can have duplicates so with that we come to the end of this lecture in the next uh, lecture we are going to go through the last item of the data structure in python and that is the dictionary so see you there in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back in this lecture we are going to understand what are dictionary in python a dictionary is a collection which is unordered changeable and indexed so when we say unordered it means that if you want to pull certain element from an from a dictionary you don't need to remember its location you just need to use its key and you can pull the 
respective value and when we say changeable it simply means that we can go ahead and insert certain key value pair in dictionary we can remove certain key value pair dictionaries are written with curly brackets and have keys and values and they help us retrieve objects by key name so we already discussed that that if you want to uh, retrieve an element from dictionary you just need to remember its key and uh, whereas if you remember in list we used to retrieve the object by location so the if, if there's certain item in the list that you want to retrieve you need to remember its location or index so if you look at this uh, specific example we have created a dictionary which has having key one and then there's a value one and it is separated by a colon so that's how you create a dictionary and then you give a comma and then you give another key value pair and so on so forth for example we have created this variable and assigned a dictionary in it so we have this name and then by a colon the name is joe then we have age of joe which is 22 then we have address of joe which is xyz street so let's hop on to the jupyter notebook and see how all of this looks like and how we create a dictionary so i am inside my jupyter notebook and let's create a dictionary by the name x and we will have certain values over there so again let's take the same example say for example name is joe and age of joe is 22 and his address is xyz street so now if you hit enter dictionary is created if you look at x we have these values key value pair inside the dictionary separated by colon and if you look at the type of x it is a dictionary or a dict as we call that now if you want to uh, see the name that has been stored in dictionary you will just say x and give a bracket and give a name over there that is the key and you will get the name of joe if you want to check the age of joe just say x age and you'll get the age 22 so in this example we have seen that a dictionary can have uh, a, a, you know it can contain any kind of value so it can be numeric it can be character a dictionary can even you know uh, store uh, list tuples so let, let's see how so say for example we have created we are creating a new dictionary my dict or you can take any name that you want and let's create a dictionary so we'll start with curly bracket and we'll say let's say in uh, my list you can take any name again and you are creating a list inside that and you are saying uh, say for example banana and then you say orange and then you say mango and that is it so the, if you look at the type of my dict it is dictionary now if you want to see what are the values that are stored in my list you will say my list and it will show you that it has banana orange and mango so now this is a list so if you store this in again create a new variable say for example y and you run this and then you see y you can see a list and if you look at the type of y it will show you it's a list so you can see that we have created a dictionary and a dictionary inside the dictionary we have a list that has been stored over there so say for example you want to you know pull this value mango from here uh, you just need to say uh, my dict and it will have my list which definitely is a key inside the dictionary and over here you will say a second index this will pull the mango so as you can see uh, the dictionaries are super flexible when it comes to dictionaries in python so with that we come to the end of this lecture we have discussed all the four data structures in python so we discussed list we discussed tuple we discussed set and we discussed the dictionary so with that we come to the end of this section in the next section we are going to go through some of the very important python statements like if then else and for loop so see you there in the next section thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to understand what are python statements there are majorly three kind of python statements that we use one is if elif and else statement 
the second one is for loop and third one is while loop so let's go and start working on if elif and else statement so what are if elif and else statement they are used when you want to execute certain piece of code when a condition is satisfied say for example you want to check certain logic in the code and if that logic is true you want to do something if that logic is not true then you want to do something else so that's where you use if and else an example would be if is today a holiday so you want to check if today is holiday if it is don't go to office else get ready and go to office so this is how the uh, if elif and else statement looks like in python you will say if and then some condition so this some condition can be if x is greater than 2 or something so if some condition then do something now this do something can be you want to print an instruction you want to execute some other logic in the code so if some condition do something if that condition is not met and you want to check second condition then you say elif some that other condition and then again do something and if both of these are not met then you will say else and do something now few things over here this else is optional so it's not necessary that every time you have an if statement you have to include an else if you need to just check one condition use a if uh, this colon is very so whenever you start the if uh, con if uh, statement it has to end with a colon and after that when you go to the next line there has to be certain spaces before you start writing the code so this is known as indentation in python indentation is very important if it is not there your python code will give an error so we will see uh, how that happens let's hop on to my jupyter notebook and start working on some practical examples so i am inside my anaconda prompt and i'll change the directory to the one in which i am working and i will launch my jupyter notebook so once inside my jupyter notebook i'll create an empty notebook and will name it python statements and you can choose any name that you want to choose let's uh, start with a very basic so let's create a variable and assign it a value of 2 perfect now we need to check if x is uh, a positive number or a negative number so we will say if x is less than 0 print x is a positive number else print sorry this will be negative so x is a negative integer number and we'll say x is a number so anything above 0 Uh, is or zero is a positive number. Let's execute this, and because x was two, x is a positive number. Let's execute. Let put. Let's put one more number. X is a still positive number. Let's say minus one, and we'll get x is a negative number. Now, few things to note over here. We talked about indentation. So, when you hit an enter after this colon, you are taken to this position, and you have to start writing your code from here. Say, for example, you want to you write something from here. Print. or let's not do this let's actually go ahead and change the position of the second line so if we'll say print if you start uh, printing uh, writing your state uh, code from here because of the indentation it will give an error and it says expected an indented block so make sure that that indent is okay and uh, then only then only your code will work in case of python statements let's take one more example a very simple example where a user can give an input and our code will say if the number is positive or negative so let's say your value let's create a variable or let's actually print something first so we'll say print please select a number or please input a number and then we'll provide this option to user to put a number so in python 3 if you want to uh, get an input from a user you use input and this input actually is a string so if you if you want a number from the user you have to convert this string to a to integer by using this int function fine now you want to check the condition if the number is positive or negative so you will say if 
your well is less than zero print you have chosen negative number fine then you will say else or let's put elif so we'll say elif one more condition if your well is greater than or equal to zero and your well is less than 10 then you will print okay and we have to put a colon over here print number is positive and is between 0 and 10 let's put a less than equal to over here and finally we want to say if both of these conditions are not met then we will simply say else print number is a positive number greater than 10 okay so let's go ahead and execute this okay so we are saying else okay elif sorry about that so it should be elif and not elif if or else if elif should be a together word so we'll hit enter now it's saying please input a number so we are going to choose say for example 9 it says number is positive and is between 0 and 10 perfect let's execute this for one more time let's say minus 1 it says you have chosen a negative number and if we choose something that is like 20 it will say number is positive number greater than 10 so perfect it is working fine and here we are checking multiple uh, conditions depending on uh, you know and we are using if elif and else so we have used all three of them over here so again uh, Make sure that the indentation is taken care of. If you won't leave empty spaces in your statement, this will give an error. And with that, we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to work on for loops. So see you there. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to understand what are for loops in Python. In Python, many objects are iterable. What that mean is you can iterate through each or each and every elements in that object one by one. So for loops in Python is used for iterating over a sequence. So sequences like list, dictionary, strings, etc. If you want to iterate through each and every item in there, you can utilize for loop for that. So we execute a set of statements once for each item in the list, tuple, etc. So for loop basically go ahead read a, an item for example list in the list one by one and then on that item you can execute a set of a statement so this is the syntax of the for loop you say for i in list so list basically is a kind of uh, you know uh, object that we have created and now we are going to iterate through each and every item in that list so we'll say for i in list you can say for item in the list or you can say for a in the list Pretty much you want to choose any uh, variable that you can choose over here. And then you, once you say for i in list, you choose a colon and then you say print i. So in this case, we are going to print each element in the list, but you can perform any kind of operation on or any kind of logic on that i. One important thing to note over here is the indentation again. So once you say for i in the list and you put a colon, you have to ensure that this there is proper indentation otherwise the python code will give an error so going through this example if we have a basket in which we have apple banana and orange so this orange is not in code so it might not work but doesn't matter so we have uh, a basket of list a list which is which is named as basket and we have apple banana and orange in there now we are saying for fruit in basket so for each element of fruit in this basket print fruit so what this is going to do is this is going to print apple banana and orange one by one so let's hop on to my jupyter notebook and understand how all of this work so i am inside my jupyter notebook and i'm going to utilize the same python statements notebook to do the further coding 
so let's create that basket again which we had in the presentation let's say apple and let's say banana and let's say orange hit enter your list is ready now you say for fruit in basket print fruit and it is because it is python 3 there has to be a parenthesis over here hit enter and it is printing the uh, fruits one by one you can say whatever if, if you don't want to use fruit you can say for c in basket and then you say print c it will still print out the individual item in the list let's take one more example let's try to create a list which has some numbers and then let's use this for loop to see if the number in the list is odd or even so let's create a list y and let's put in over there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 fine now we'll say for i in y and we'll hit colon and make sure that you are using proper indentation jupyter notebook as i said it whenever you hit enter after colon it brings you to the proper indented location so for i in y you will say if and now you are going to use another you know python statement if inside the for so kind of nested statements so you will say if i and to check an odd or even you have to use this modular function so if you uh, you say if i mod 2 equal to 0 so any number which is divisible by 2 uh, i mean which does not give a remainder of uh, uh, you know anything so if, if if the remainder from the modular function is 0 the number is even but if the number is not divisible by 2 that means the remainder will not be 0 and you will know the number is odd so if i mod 2 is equal to 0 we will simply say print number is even else if you get a reminder you will say print number is odd and definitely if the number is not even even it is going to be odd in our case so we'll just print it and there you can see that the first one is odd the second one is even and we got the results for all the item in the list and the last one is even number which is eight so that's how the for loop work and we also see we also saw how we can use nested python statements so we utilize if inside the for loop with that we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we are going to understand how does while loop work so see you there thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to understand what are while loops in python while loop is a control flow statement that allows code to be executed repeatedly based on certain boolean condition so taking this example we say while my car tank is empty so the boolean condition over here is is my car tank empty or not so while it is empty keep filling the fuel so the filling of the fuel will stop as soon as my car tank is not empty so that's how it works and if you look at the more mathematical example it simply says so let, let's say let's assume we have a variable i which has a value of 1 now we say while i is less than 10 and then you have a colon over here so this is checking for this condition i is less than 10 and if that is true it will print i and we have to uh, add next next line of code is we are adding 1 to the value i so that it becomes 2 and this will keep on you know this loop will keep on executing till the time i is of value less than 10 but as soon as it approaches 10 this loop will stop now while loop has to be used very carefully because if there is some condition which is never going to be true your computer will keep on executing the while loop and it will be kind of stuck so so let's go ahead and hop on to my jupyter notebook to discuss while loop so i am inside my jupyter notebook and let's create some sort of uh, so let's say let's let's take the same same example let's say i is equal to 1 and then we will say while or let's actually assign this variable of one i is equal to 1 separately and now over here let's say while i is less than 
10 let's say print i and then you have to add i and another way to say i is equal to i plus 1 is a more programmatic way is i plus equal to 1 so this essentially means the same i is equal to i plus 1 if you execute this guess what happens the numbers from 1 to 9 should be printed so right so we have printed from 1 to 9 and the code execution has stopped so definitely if you don't use this i is equal to i plus 1 your this loop is go, is going to keep on executing and it will keep on printing 1 1 1 so let's see what let's do that also let's hit enter and uh, actually we have to okay so because we initially uh, the value of i was actually 11 it is stopped so let's execute this line also i equal to 1 and now let's execute execute this piece of code and it will keep on printing 1 1 1 1 1 and the computer is kind of stuck so if you see over here uh, the code is stuck and you can see through this circle now so if you want to you know uh, hard stop your uh, python notebook if you want to restart the kernel there are some ways of doing it so you go inside this kernel and you say restart or you can say interrupt so we'll just interrupt it and this will stop the uh, execution of this while loop so the processing has stopped now if you go ahead and say i is equal to i plus 1 this should only print till 9 and the execution should stop fine so with that we come to the end of this lecture and this section in the next section we are going to understand what are methods and function in python so see you there thank you hi guys welcome back to the course let's learn python in this section we are going to touch on two very important topics methods and function so what are methods and function in python let's start with method so as you know python is an object oriented language and it can deal with classes and objects we discussed in the very beginning that everything in python is object so whether it is a list whether it is a dictionary pretty much everything in python that you create is an object so what is a method a python method is a label that you can call on an object and it can execute a piece of code on that object so essentially you create a list that is a object then you has certain that then you have certain inbuilt methods that you can execute on that list say for example you say list dot add now dot add so add is a method that is going to execute on that list and that add comes pre-built inside python so methods are functions that are built in the objects and you can also create your own methods you can define your own methods but that is something that we are not going to cover in this section it is more of object oriented programming so we might cover that later in the course but for now we are going to focus on the inbuilt methods so to understand the method better let's hop on to my jupyter notebook so i am inside my anaconda prompt i am going to work on my section folder and once inside there i will go and launch the jupyter notebook so the jupyter notebook is up and let's create a new uh, notebook and name it methods and function so in here let's let's start with defining a very simple list so let's say again basket so let's create a list of fruits in the basket and let's say apple let's say banana and let's choose some other fruit except orange so let's say grapes and this is a basket now and i just choose grapes because by now you might be pretty bored with all these three combinations so i choose grapes instead <laughs> okay so now basket is a list so if you type type of basket it's a list okay now let's see what are the inbuilt methods that are available with this list so when we say basket and we say dot now there are various methods to un to know what are various there are various uh, methods to understand what are the inbuilt methods that are available with a particular kind of object so this is a list and if you if you are working on a jupyter notebook after the dot 
you hit tab you will get a list of functions or methods that are available that you can execute on this object so for example you can append certain values so we say append and then you go ahead and uh, add our favorite orange and hit enter now if you look at basket you will see it has four fruits apple banana grapes and orange similarly if you want if you don't love oranges you can just go ahead and pop them out so pop again is one of the more one of the other method available with this list thing so just say pop and if you don't give any input to the pop it will just pop out the uh, last element in the list so execute it orange is popped out so now if you see basket it is having apple banana and grapes fine so there are some other ways through which you can see what are the various methods that are associated with uh, a specific uh, object so in jupyter notebook you can go ahead and type shift plus tab and it will tell you that okay this object is a list and it has a string from and the length is 3 and all that uh there is one more way to understand what are the various uh, attributes associated to a object so if you type help and this is especially helpful when you are not working with the jupyter notebook because shift plus tab i think works only in jupyter notebook so you say help and then you pass the object and it will give you details on the did all the uh, details on the object that is available so so far so good so that's how you utilize methods and specifically we were targeting the inbuilt methods that comes prebuilt with the certain objects in python with that we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we are going to discuss a very important concept in python which is function how to define function and how to use function so see you in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back to the course let's learn python in this lecture we are going to understand one very important topic in python which are functions to understand function let's imagine that you have a certain piece of code or logic that you want to write again and again throughout your code so there is a certain piece of logic that you want to use again and again in your code now there are two ways of doing it one you go on and keep on replicating that piece of logic line by line everywhere in the code and the other one is you define that piece of logic somewhere in the code and then you just refer to that definition wherever you need it so function is defined and then it can be called for execution anywhere and any number of times in the code so let's go ahead and see what is the syntax of function so this is how you create a function and the syntax is rather simple you just say def that will define a function and then you give a name to the function followed by a close parenthesis and a colon and on the next line starting next line you can uh, you know write uh, your code logic whatever statement you want to execute you can put inside over there now make sure that whenever you are using function the indentation is being taken care of otherwise you will get error so you define the function with your piece of logic whatever number of number of lines you want to write in this case i am just printing thanks for calling me and that will define the function and then whenever you want to print this line in this case like thanks for calling me you just call my func and it will print this line thanks for calling me another way of defining a function is in this case for example i am defining a function by a name calc and i am passing two variables two attributes or arguments a and b inside that and it's actually going to return the sum of a and b so whenever you are going to call this function it will take two parameters as input a and b say for example 2 plus 3 and it will return a plus b in this case it will return 5 so you can define a function and you can take back a value by from a function by using return so let's hop on to my jupyter notebook to understand it better i am inside my jupyter notebook methods and function and let's start defining a function so you say def to define a function and then you say hello and use close parenthesis so the variable name follows by the followed by the closed parenthesis and then a colon and this function is simply going to print thanks for calling me okay great you execute this now notice nothing has been printed as of now because you have defined your function but you have not called it so if you look at hello type of hello 
it's a function great now if you say hello and hit enter you will see that the output is it's a function that is fine but you are not getting this print statement so to do that you have to include the close parenthesis now if you hit enter you will see your print statement is getting executed let's create one more function for calculating or actually for performing some arithmetic operation on certain set of numbers so let's say calc and we will say we will pass three variables or three parameters or arguments a b and c let's put a colon and then in the next line we are going to return a plus b into c let's define this function so the function is now defined now if you say calc and simply don't pass any arguments it will say it requires arguments a b and c so over here because this is supposed to get three arguments you have to put them as an input so you say calc 1 comma 2 comma 3 and if you uh, hit enter this will return it will add a plus b into c so b will will be multiplied by c as per the board mass rule so 3 into 6 and then plus 1 7 so you should get a well result of 7 perfect and you can also assign this uh, output to some variables so say for example you want to have variable y where you want to store calc of you know 3 4 5 it will store the value in y and if you look at y it is the result so 5 into 4 20 plus 3 23 so that's how you define a function and uh, with that we come to the end of this lecture and as of now we are also going to end this entire section so we have gone through methods and function we also went through different type of data structures that are there in the python and we also went ahead and saw how path python deals with numbers and strings and characters and with that i think we have sufficient knowledge to go ahead and start working on some 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 of the python projects so there is a lot when we talk about how much you can do with the knowledge that you have gained till now so in the next section we are going to create a very very simple project rock paper and scissor and we will see how we can utilize various uh, you know python statements and these functions to create such a game so see you there in the next section thank you hi guys welcome back and congratulations on making this far in the course till now we have learned how does python deals with numbers and string then we went ahead and understood what are various data structures that comes pre built in python so we learned about list set tuple and dictionary then we went ahead and understood what are various python statements so we went through if else and elif then we went ahead and understood what is for loop and how does it work and we also discussed while loop nextly we discussed what are methods and functions in pythons and how we can create functions so with that it covers pretty much the basics of the python and with that amount of python knowledge you can start working on uh, small projects small games those kind of thing and this is very important guys whenever you are going to whenever you learn a language try to implement uh, some sort of mini projects using that that language in your actual real world problems so if you are working in you know say office and you want to automate certain reports you 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 should try to see how you can utilize python to automate that so those kind of things should be definitely done in this section and particularly in this lecture we are going to create a mini game which is known as rock paper and scissor so before we start coding the game let's understand the basics of the game so it's pretty straight forward the game is mostly played between two players and all you need to do is you have using your hand you have to form the shape of rock paper or scissor so you can see there these are the shapes that are used to uh, that are used to form a shape of the scissor a paper or a rock and if one person is having the shape of a scissor and the other one is having the shape of a paper then the person with the scissor shape wins because scissor beats paper similarly paper beats rock so if one person is having the shape of a paper and the other one is forming a rock the person with the shape of the paper wins and and then the third rule is rock rock beats scissor so if the person is forming a rock and the other one is forming a scissor the person who is forming the shape of the rock wins now if two person are forming the shape uh, two or more than two person if they are playing and if they are all forming the same shape then it's a draw 
So let's go ahead and start coding this in Python. I will hop onto my Jupyter Notebook. So I am inside my Jupyter Notebook and I will go in home and we will create a new notebook and we will name it Rock, Paper and Scissor. So let's rename it. We'll start with importing some basic libraries that we are going to use. So remember we talked about how Python is very common nowadays because of presence of amazing libraries in, in it. So there are certain libraries that come in build with in Python, which you can utilize. So we are going to utilize NumPy, which is a numerical Python library, and it comes very handy when you want to play with numbers in Python. So we'll say import NumPy and we'll give an alias of NP to NumPy. This alias actually will help us writing this NumPy in short form. So we'll execute this. NumPy has been executed. I mean imported. So it is imported now. Next, we'll go ahead and define the set of valid values that will be associated with the game. So we'll create a tuple. So let's say, let's put a comment over there. So define a tuple of valid values. So these valid values are the values that a player can choose. So let's say, and let's mark, mark this down. So it will be as a comment. And this game is to be going between a, the computer and the, and one player. So the user will be supposed to choose either one of the value of rock, paper or scissor. Computer will randomly generate that value and the results will be compared. So again, as per the rule, either one of the computer or the player will win. So let's define the valid value. Let's create a variable, variable valid val and let's put three values inside there. So we'll say rock, then we'll put paper and last we'll put scissor. So we are using the short forms for it. So R is for rock, P is for paper and then and S is for scissor. Let's go ahead and execute that. Next, let's define a function for taking the input from the user. So we'll go ahead and define a function using def and then we'll define the function as take underscore user underscore input and uh, we'll close the parenthesis and let's move to the logic of the function. So we'll start with saying your name. We'll create a variable your name and this will basically take input from the user. So we'll say enter your name. Okay, so next, once we have this name, we will store that in the user input. So we'll say user underscore input is equal to, and then we'll input. So this variable, your name, will take your name as an input so that it knows and it will display the results using your name. And here we are taking the input from the user. So we'll say your name so which basically will display your name in the result and then we'll say plus and then we'll say please choose a r for rock p for paper or S for scissor. Fine, so we, we have done that and it's going to choose. And so this actually will enable the code to take input from the user. Okay, so once that is done, let's see if the user input is valid or not. So user might end up uh, putting something else apart from, you know, R, S or P. So for that, we are going to use if statement. So we'll say if user underscore input is not in. And remember, we created this tuple valid value. So we'll use that. So we'll say if user input is not in. So it's not is. So if user input not in valid underscore val then print your name so it is again going to display your name and then it will say please choose a value please choose a 
value between R, S or P. That's fine. That should do, do the trick. Let's put this in double quotes. Okay. Else, and we have to put some else over condition over there. So else will say print and we will print the value that the user have chosen. So we'll say print your name plus and then we'll just say you have chosen and then we'll again say plus and then we'll put the user input and so input so okay fine till now and from this function we are going to return something so we'll say return user input and your name so this is this function basically again so let's discuss this function again so this part of the code will take your name as an input so it will enable you to input your name and this part of the code will enable you to choose something between r s and p this if code will check if your name is if you have chosen the value that you have chosen is between r s or p if it is there that's fine if not then it will say you have to choose a valid value and then it will return the input that you have chosen and with your name so let's execute or define this function the function has now been defined now let's go ahead and take the input from the computer so for that we will define a function define def comp underscore input and it's going to be without any arguments over there so for comp input so we want uh, a number have that has to be chosen by computer so let's we'll give computer to choose one two or three and then for one we'll say it's r or rock for two we'll say it's p or uh, you know paper and for three it will give an s which is for scissor so to generate random input so let's first uh, you know create a variable computer input and to generate a random number for by computer we'll say numpy dot random dot randint so numpy dot random dot randint and it will say one comma four so this actually is going to generate a number between one and three so remember if you take the first value is inclusive so one is inclusive but the four is not inclusive so when we use npy dot random dot randint it will choose a value between one and three and you can feel free to go ahead and run this to see if the random number that is being generated is between one to three or not okay so that's fine and then we'll say so let, let's define the logic if if it is one it is rock and stuff like that so we'll go ahead and say if comp underscore input equal to one then we'll define a new variable computer and it will be it will assign a value of p to it and we'll use elif so we have to check one more condition so we'll use elif comp underscore input equal to two then we will assign computer a value of say paper okay and finally if it is not one or two it will be three because it's going to generate only a number between one to three so we'll say computer is equal to scissor great and then we will return this computer variable with the value of p r or s great so that is done let's define this function went well now let's create a function to play the actual game so we'll say def game and let's close this bracket parenthesis and with a colon then we will say for user because this function uh, user take user input is giving out two values user input and your name so we'll define two variables for that so we'll say user 
your name and we'll run that function over here to take user input and this will run the function and the output will be stored so there are two outputs from this function one of them will go to user another one will go to your name which is fine then we'll also go ahead and take uh, create a variable to take the computer input so we'll say comp is equal to comp underscore input so this will actually go ahead and give whatever has been inside this computer variable so you can clearly see that we are using you know functions to define a certain logic and then we are using variables to to run that function so now instead of writing the entire code here we are only using the you know take user input and computer input which not only you know looks pretty clean again if you want to use this function somewhere else we can use that and also not all the code code is at one place so it is very much readable so great so we have def we have got the user input and we have got the computer input now let's start comparing them so we'll say if user equal to comp so the very first one is if we are going to check if this is a draw so there is a draw between computer and the user so this will print a message wow it's a draw and you can put we print whatever message that you want fine then we will say elif so you can see we are going to use elif a lot because we have to you know code down all the probabilities and there are other ways of doing it but we are keeping it very simple so we'll say if user elif user equal to r and comp equal to p so if user has a rock and computer has a paper so then who is going to win computer is going to win because uh, paper precedes rock so we'll print computer wins great so if both of the above conditions are not met we'll say elif and then we'll say user equal to r and comp equal to s so in this case what is going to happen the user will win so we'll say print and then we'll say your name which is inside this variable which is which comes from the take user input so your name plus we'll say wins great again we'll say elif and then we will say if user is equal to p and comp equal to r then we will say again user wins so we'll just copy and paste it here instead of writing it again we'll just copy and paste it here so if user is paper and uh, computer is rock then user will win we'll again say elif if user equal to p and comp is equal to s so if user is paper and comp is scissor definitely the scissor can cut the paper so we'll say computer wins okay and then again we'll use one more elif and we'll say if user equal to s and comp equal to r so if user has a scissor shape of scissor and comp has chosen rock then scissor actually uh, is so rock can beat scissor so in this case also the computer will win so we'll print that and finally we'll say one more elif elif and we can use else also but let's just code it down so we'll say elif user equal to s and comp equal to p then we'll say print so again let's copy and paste it from here let's copy and let's paste it over here so that's it guys i think you have created the function game and now you have all this stuff so you are taking the input and you are comparing the values to get the results let's define this function okay so there is some invalid syntax okay i missed the equal to sign over there let's again execute this okay 
so the function is now defined let's play the game guys so let's we will only say game hit enter now it's asking for me to enter my name so i'll say usher and then it's saying usher please choose a r for rock p for paper or s for scissor so i'll say rock i'll hit enter and usher you have chosen r usher wins okay so we are not displaying the message as to what computer has chosen so let's display it over here in this function game so we'll print computer choose and then we'll say plus comp so we'll get to know what computer is choosing because it is unfair to know what it has chosen and i'm winning right so okay so let's define this function and let's execute that function again so i'll again put a name joe so it's saying joe choose a r for rock p for paper and s for scissors so i'll uh, choose s this time so it's saying joe you have chosen s computer chose p so joe wins great let's play it for one more time so again i'll put usher and then usher please choose r so i'll choose p this time and i choose paper computer chose a paper so it's a draw so as you can see this game is clearly working you can go ahead and you play this game as, as much as you want to because this is the first game that you have created and with that we come to the end of this lecture so you can go ahead and start you know looking in google and you can find lot of uh, you know exercises that you can utilize using python in the next lecture i am going to discuss what are some of the various places where we can use python so what are some of the areas uh, areas like you know artificial intelligence data mining natural language processing there are a lot of things where python is being used currently so in the next lecture we are going to discuss what all we can do with python so see you in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back this is going to be the last lecture in the course let's learn python i think by now we have acquired sufficient skills to go ahead and start coding in python now i know there are certain topics that has not been covered topics like how to create create class in python how can we define lambda function in python how can we go ahead and uh, use decorators in python so there are still a lot of topics kind of advanced topics which are left to be covered in this course but i have not covered in this course and the reason being i intend to keep this course free for anyone who want to learn basics of python if you want to enhance your skill further in python there are a lot of good courses that are available on udemy feel feel free to go ahead and enroll in them and in case you think there are certain things that has not been covered which are very essential to be included in python feel free to drop me a note and i will include that in the course now once you have these skills what next what you should be doing in python so when it comes to python there are a lot of areas where python has made an huge impact the very first one is machine learning so python has an amazing set of libraries when you want to utilize the algorithms related to machine learning so algorithms like linear and logistic regression random forest naive bias those algorithms are inbuilt in python and we have libraries like scikit learn which you can utilize to call in these algorithms it will just take an input and give you the prediction or the output so you don't need to code the you know make the entire code you don't need to code the algorithm from scratch you can utilize the prebuilt libraries in python the next area where python has made an impact is uh, data mining so there is large amount of data that is present all across us and we can utilize pandas to get that data so whether that data is present in on net so we can utilize web scraping whether that data is 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 present in the form of pdf or word document we can you know extract that data using libraries in python and then we can utilize libraries like numpy or pandas to further you know explore and mine that data and for plotting that data we can utilize libraries like matplotlib and seaborn the next area where python has a good presence is natural language processing so what is natural language processing the ability of computer to understand languages like human areas like you know speech to text so where the computer can understand what you are speaking so th those kind of areas uh, feeds like you want to you know create sentences the computer is able to create sentences on its own 
it can understand the context that it is reading on its own. So that area primarily constitutes natural language processing. And Python has again a very good set of libraries that you can start working when it comes to natural language processing. So if it is simple, you know, concept like TF-IDF or is it if it is advanced concept like sequence to sequence, Python has packages and libraries and functions defined for all of that. The next area is creating a uh, you know full stack portal so the a portal which has a functionality uh, you know a front end which is kind of user interface and a, and a back end where you have programming languages like python and you know all of it work together integrated closely so when it comes to back end you already know how to code in python for the front end python has some very good framework like django and flask which you can utilize to create a user interface so let us understand it like that. You have created a machine learning or a deep learning model that is working great. Now, if you want to give that model to the end user, you are not going to just hand it the code and say, okay, here is the code, you can run it and get the result because the end user might not have any knowledge on Python. So you have to create some sort of user interface that you can integrate with your models and and present it to the client so the client at the end will get a portal kind of thing in which he will utilize the front end to upload some data and the data will go back to the back end where your python code will execute the model will you know process the data and it will give the result and the result will be rendered back to the front end so those kind of things are done using django where your code will go to the back end and uh, front end will will have uh, you know Page, HTML pages and CSS and all that. And one more area where Python has a very strong presence is computer vision. So whether it is image classification, where it is reading images, uh, you know, uh, from unstructured data like PDF, Python has a very, uh, very strong presence of libraries in that field also. So things like CNN or convolution neural network, whether it is OpenCV, Python has some wonderful package when it comes to computer vision. So these are some of the areas where you can go ahead and start applying your Python knowledge. I definitely will be, you know, creating some of the courses from on these areas like natural language processing and then, you know, web scrapping and all. In fact, there is already one course out there where I have created a full stack portal kind of thing utilizing Django uh, to, uh, to predict. So basically it is a uh, it is a portal that has been created at the back end. We have certain computer vision model which has been created utilizing uh, CNN architecture, and the and then there is a front end that has been created using Django. So what you can do is you have to upload an image using the front end. The image then will go back to the back end where your Python model will classify the image and it will render the result back to the front end. So that's how it works. And let me go ahead to the next page to show you the, some other details of the portal. So the portal has been created using Django and Python. So definitely the client side, it is like HTML and CSS and JavaScript and the server side, it is the model that I have created for image classification. And the entire portal has been created using all open source technologies. So we have I have utilized Python, Django, HTML, CSS, which is cascading style sheet, JavaScript, CNN, which is convolutional neural network, transfer learning, utilizing VGA 16. So to train a model on computer vision, it requires a huge amount of data and it requires huge amount of computer resource. To, so in order to bypass that, uh, there's, a, there's a concept which is known as transfer learning. So you can utilize the weight of already trained model and to extract features and then you can create your own model. So uh, more of that has been discussed in the POC that I have created in my course. So I have, I have also used TensorFlow and Keras. So the name of the course is Full Stack Model Creation and Deployment in Python. The link has been provided in this page. You can go ahead and uh, browse through my course. The POC is there. You can go ahead and check out the POC. And if it looks promising, you can go ahead and purchase the course. So in case you are planning to purchase the course, I have provided a link. Uh, uh, to the course and then uh, you can use this coupon code full stack underscore Django using this course you, you will get the course at the discounted price so with that we come to the end of this uh, in this course and I believe you have sufficient Python knowledge 
which will help you start coding in python so wish you all the best for all your future endeavors thank you for taking this course thanks